Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on differential equations. This is video number 28, or video 5 in a subsection on separation of variables. Specifically, I'm going to discuss example 3 of solving Laplace's equation using separation of variables, this time in three dimensions. Previous videos to this, which are relevant, are number 24, where I showed you the theory of separation of variables, number 25, where I showed you how to calculate the characteristic equation and to get the general solution for a second order differential equation. In videos 26 and 27, I did two examples on solving the Laplace equation using separation of variables. Video 26 is the most detailed of that, of, of excuse me, of the two, so I suggest you if you have any difficulties with this particular video, you go back to video 26. Now the difference between video 28 and videos 26 and 27 is I'm now extending from two dimensions into three. So in the bottom left of your screen, I've written the boundary conditions for this particular equation. So like I said, we're extending from two into three dimensions. And we know with separation of variables, we remove one variable each time. And we repeat the process until we've removed all the variables or separated out all of the variables. So with that said, let's, let's say that we can write V, which is a function of X, Y, and Z, as S a function of X and Y, and z a function of x, excuse me, z a function of z. So we take the second derivative because that's what's required from Laplace's equation and we get s double prime z plus s z double prime is equal to zero. And then we can rewrite this as z double prime over z is equal to minus s double prime over s. And that's equal to L squared going to call it L squared because we're going to need more variables later on. Now just for convenience I'm going to give it a minus here as well. That's just what I've decided to do in this particular case. So we're going to get two differential equations as a result. We're going to get z double prime plus L squared z is equal to zero and similarly we're going to get s double prime minus L squared s is equal to zero. So we know the solutions to the equation on the left, the equation for z. It's going to be z, a function of small z, is going to be equal to e sine times l z plus f cos l z. And you can see, of course, that I, I, know, I know how many equations in advance I'm going to get, so I'm numbering the, or excuse me, I'm giving the coefficients these letters for that particular reason. So now we've found out what the solution for z is. Now what we need to do is go ahead and solve the equation for s. How do we solve the equation for s? Well, here's s. And we need to go ahead and solve that. So we know that s is a function of x and y. But it's, it's now we now have our own second order linear differential equation here. So we're going to move away from, we'll say in this case, Laplace's equation, and we're going to get the following. So we have s double prime, s double prime uh, minus L squared s is equal to zero. S is a function of x and y. I'm going to make it x of x and y of y, like this. So s double prime is equal to x double prime y plus x y double prime. Now what we do is we plug this into the equation. And if we plug it into the equation and rearrange, we get the following. So we get x double prime over x plus y double prime over y is equal to L squared. What I'm going to do now is bring across the L squared and put it with the x, and we have this now equal to zero. So we know that the only way this can happen is if we have it equal to the separation constant. I'm gonna call it k squared. So now what we have are the following differential equations. We have x double prime minus, we're gonna have l squared plus k squared times x is equal to zero. bracket like that 
and we're gonna have y double prime plus k squared y is equal to zero. So the solutions are as follows. Well, y, a function of small y, is simply gonna be c times the sine of k times y, and we're gonna have d times d times cos of k times y, and z, and z is gonna be slightly more complicated. Z is a function of small z, Sli slightly more complicated, so it's a times e to the square root of k squared plus l squared multiplied by x plus b times e to the minus times the square root of k squared plus l squared and we have our x as well. So now we have all the solutions that we require. Just bear with me and I clear this page. So to write it down once more, we have x is a function of small x. It's going to be a times, I'm going to call it e to the alpha x now, just because we, we can plug in the, uh, the square root later on if we like, plus b times e to the minus alpha x. y a function of small y is going to be c, c times the sine of ky. And we're going to have d times the cos of ky. And finally, we're going to have e times the sine of lz. E times the sine of lz plus f times the cos of lz. We need to apply our boundary conditions. So if you look at boundary condition five, boundary condition five implies that a is going to be equal to zero. Boundary condition one implies d is going to be equal to zero. Okay, so this is because of the exponential. A, is, a goes to zero because the exponential. D goes to zero because of the cosine. And f goes to zero for the same reason. And that's, be, that's using boundary condition three. That's f is equal to zero for, this, for cosine as well. Now, if we look at two, and we look at four. What we get is that k is equal to n pi over a, and l is equal to m pi over b. So we're able to put all of this together and we get our updated solution that v a function of x, y, and z is equal to a constant, let's call it c. Then we're going to have e to the, so go, I'm just going to write it in this way, you'll see it's the same thing, minus pi, we're going to have the square root of n over a to be squared, we're going to have plus m over b to be squared, like this, close the square root, we have x, and close this, now we're going to have sine m pi y over a and sine m pi z over b. That's actually an n there and then we have sine m pi z over b. Like this. All right, so that is our, that is our solution. But what about boundary condition number six? So boundary condition number six talks about our V zero. And this, as we know at this stage, is the more difficult one to, to do. We've, that's the one that we are challenged to uh, be able to fit. So the way we do this is as follows. We note that V is equal to V zero function of Y and Z at X is equal to zero. So we plug in the fact that X is equal to zero. Right, we plug in the fact that x is equal to zero, but we do that after we know that we can write this. We can write any function as the as a linear combination of the uh, of of the function of the um, solutions. 
So we have the sum n is equal to 1 to infinity, the sum m is equal to 1 to infinity, and we have all of this, all of what I have up here. So what we're saying here is that this is, this is a particular solution here uh, that can give us many solutions, but any solution can be made by adding up all of the, all of the solutions and just changing the integer. So you might have sine of 2 pi y over a, and then you might have the sine of, I don't know, 104 times uh, pi y over a. So now what we do is we plug in x is equal to 0 into this equation. And if you plug x is equal to 0, you're going to get the double sum again. You're going to get all the terms that are left, and that's going to be equal to v0. And we're nearly there now, because then what we do is we multiply both sides, we multiply both sides by a, a sine. Now if you remember here, we have two sine terms. We, this is important now. On the right, we have, we have two sine terms. So we need to multiply those two sine terms in here and those two, those two sine terms in here. All right, and we change the integers. So we change the integers each time. So you might have uh, g and you might have something else, g and h or whatever it is. So when you plug those in, we know that it only only were only one value that when they all the integers are equal will actually give us a contribution, and we'll find that the left hand side will be equal to a times b over four times the coefficients, and let's say they're just give them let's give them the following integers r and g. So finally, we can put it all together and saying that the coefficient, let's say coefficients sub n sub m is going to be equal to 4 over a b, the integral a to b, the integral of, excuse me, zero, 0 to a, that's what it is, 0 to a, 0 to b, and we're going to have v0 sine n pi y over a, sine n pi z, n pi z over b and we need to integrate that of course dy dz that's the coefficient and of course you can plug that back into the earlier equation uh, as c sub n m so it's it's the idea that I'm trying to get across to you rather than the actual the every this the small nitty-gritty so thanks for watching please pass it on to your friends subscribe to my channel and you might also give me a comment in the box below